mercy upon us, O God, upon us and protect us. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for every man. We exalt you, the mother of the true light. We glorify you, O Saint the Theotokos. For you brought forth unto us the Savior of the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory be to your Master, our King, Christ the pride of the apostles, the crown of the martyrs, the joy of the righteous, the firmness of the churches, the forgiveness of sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. We worship Him. We glorify Him. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord bless us. Amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. We we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. We honor the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose from the dead according to the scriptures, ascended into the heavens. He sits at the right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son's worship and glorify, who spoke by the prophets and in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We confess on baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. God who carries the sin of the world, we ask you hear us, have mercy on us, and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Son, have mercy, O Lord. Son, hear us and have mercy. Son, Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, have mercy, O Lord. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, have mercy, O Lord. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison, have mercy, O Lord. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Holy, holy, holy Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. Have mercy on us, O God, the Father, the Pantocrator. Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord God of hosts, be with us, for we have no help in our harshness and tribulations by you. Absolve, forgive, and remit, O God, our transgressions, those which we have committed willingly, and those which we have committed unwillingly, those which we have committed knowingly, and those which we have committed unknowingly. Then and in the manifest, O Lord, for us for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon us. Let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins.
Worthy praise, thank you, saying, Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Spirit, peace and vacation, the Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. Remember, Lord, those who brought you this gift, those on whose behalf they have been brought, and by those whom they have been brought, give them all the heavenly reward. Pray for these holy and precious gifts, our sacrifices, and those who bring them. Lord, have mercy. Alleluia, Gemevi, Enoromi, Efeone, Nakevon, Efchois, Oo, Emsog, Bente, O Mevi, Efershine, Nithi seya nieperos fora Shopo e roca Ene e no O o o o o o o In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Blessed be God, the Father, Pantocrator. Amen. Blessed be His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. One is the Holy Father, one is the Holy Son, one is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, Lord of all you nations, for his mercy has been strengthened upon us, and the truth of the Lord abides forever. Amen. Alleluia. Nox abetrike, yoke, agnum nema. Maybe a person of guest as he can. Et omnem Let us give thanks, beneficent, merciful God, the Father of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he has covered us, helped us, God has accepted us unto himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us our. Let us also ask the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us unto yourself, spared us, supported us, 
and has brought us this hour. Pray that God may have mercy and compassion on us. Hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of the saints. For that which is good on our behalf at all times, and make us worthy to partake of the communion of his holy and blessed mysteries for the remission of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, to grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the works of Satan, the counsel of the wicked men, the rising up of the enemies, the hidden and manifest. Take them away from us and from all your people. And from this holy table and this holy church that is yours, that those things which are good and profitable do provide for us. For it is you who has given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Oh, 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 oh. Servants, the ministers, day, my brothers, the deacons, and all the people in the congregation, and my weakness be absolved from the mouth of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and from the mouth of one holy Catholic Apostolic Church, and from the mouth of twelve apostles, the mouth of the beholder of God, the evangelist, Saint Mark, the Holy Apostle, and Martyr, the patient of severe, our teacher, the scorer, and the Nestor's Apostolic, Saint Peter, the Holy Mar, High Priest, Saint John Chrysostom, Saint Cyril, Saint Peter, Saint Gregory, the 300 Tiana, Simon, the 150 of Constantinople, and 200 Ephesus, and from the mouth of the honored Father, High Priest, Pope, Abad of the Rose, the second and his part of our self our Father, Metropolitan, and Basarabian, and from the mouth of my object self, for blessed and full of glory is your holy name, O Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now come to ages of all ages. Amen. Pesaromata a pe pensoti erasmi si emovavesoti 
mono of Gone no vino. Forgiveness of our sins. <laughs> 
of our teacher Paul to the Corinthians, whose blessings be upon us, amen. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed, but in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprison imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you, our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own, afflict by your own affections. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. The grace of God the Father be with you all, amen. Epistle from the Epistle of our teacher St. James. May his blessings be upon us all. Amen. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to build the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds. They are even turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great, a for see how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that defiles the whole body and sets fire on the course of nature. And is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can, can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we, will, we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the, same, in the similitude of God, out of the same mouth proceeding blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? 
Thus no spring can yield both salt water and fresh. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world, which are in the world, the world shall pass away, and all desires be with us, the will of God, by forever and more. Remember me, O my Lord, remember me, O Five days, Ananias the high priest came down with the elders and a certain orator, orator named Tertullus. These gave evidence of the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight, we accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all things thankfulness. Nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. We have found this man a plague, a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader in a sect of the Nazarenes, and even tried to profane the temple, and we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. The commander Lysus came down, came by with a great violence, took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you. And by examining him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, maintaining that these things were so. Then Paul, after the governor had nodded him to speak, answered, Inasmuch as I know that you have been for many years the judge of this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because you made a certain that it is no more that, than twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone, nor sitting in the crowd, either, either in the synagogues or in the city. Nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call the sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always try to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. And after many years, I came to bring alms and offerings to my nation, in the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with the multitude nor with the tumult. They ought to have been here before you to object if they had anything against me, or else that those who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the council, unless it is for the, this one statement which I cried out, standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged by you this day. But when Felix heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, When Lysus the commander come down, comes down, I'll make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for him or visit him. The word of the Lord shall grow and multiply, be mighty, confirm the Lord Jesus God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the 22nd blessed month of Brahmahat. May God end it in goodness and renew it for us in peace and tranquility. Our sins and equities are forgiven. For attend the mercy of the Lord of my fathers, my brothers, and my sisters. Amen. On this day of the year 102 of the martyrs, we celebrate the departure of St. Crollos the Bishop of Jerusalem. He was born in Jerusalem in the year 315 AD and was brought up in a true Christian family. He studied spiritual sciences and Greek literature. He was ordained by Bishop Maximus of Jerusalem as a deacon, then as a priest. 
He was appointed to teach the catechumens of the Jews and the pagans of the Church of the Resurrection. He stayed in this role for 16 years, teaching the Christian creed, and people used to gather to listen to his preaching. When the Bishop of Jerusalem passed away, he was chosen as his replacement. During that time, the Arian heresy was spreading, and Bishop Colos was one of the staunch fighters against it. For that reason, he was targeted by the Arians and was banished from his diocese for three years. He bore this with patience and gratitude until he returned to his place in the year 370 AD, after the death of the Arian king Valens. St. Colos attended the Constantinople Council in the year 381 AD, and he was one of the distinguished attendees of this council. He wrote a number of books about the Incarnation, the Orthodox Creed, and the baptism of catechumens into Christianity. Finally, he rested in peace. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Also on this day, we celebrate the departure of Joseph of Arimathea. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, a wealthy, good, and just man, and a member of the Sanhedrin. At the same time, he was a disciple of Jesus Christ, and he did not attend the session of the Sanhedrin, which judged Jesus Christ, because he did not agree with them about Jesus' crucifixion. After Jesus' death on the cross, he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that was hewn out of the rock, where no one had ever been lain before. And Nicodemus joined him in that matter. After the resurrection of the Lord, he accompanied the apostles, and after Pentecost, he sold all that he owned and brought the proceeds to the apostles to be distributed to the poor and the needy. Then he went to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Also on this day, we celebrate the departure of Bishop Michael, the Bishop of Nicada. He was ordained as a bishop for Nicada on the 12th of Misra, 1391 of the Martyrs, by Pope Matthäus IV, the 102nd Patriarch on the See of St. Mark. He shared in the ordination of Pope Ioannis XVI, the 103rd Patriarch of the See of St. Mark. On Sunday, the 9th of Baramhat, 1392 of the Martyrs, at the Church of the Great Martyr St. Makarios Abu Sufin at Darb al Bahr, Herod Shenouda at Old Cairo. During his days, the Dominican monk and historian Vanso visited Nicada and met with him, and then he rested in peace after he pastored his people with care and love. May his blessing be with us all, and glory be to God forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ fasted for us forty days and four. Lord be 
in your name may your kingdom come form or yours is the glory forever the incense Mary, the incense is in her womb, which she will born to forgive us. Let us praise when the angels proclaim and saying, Worthy. Satanatoso, ek parte no genetis en esonimes. Satanatoso, Anastas, Ekton, Nekero, Kean, Elton, Estos, Sorenos, Eneisonimes, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages. Amen, O Holy Trinity. Have mercy upon us. Baby, boss of Shesta City. It omnes. Oh, Master Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who said to send the honor disciples and holy apostles. Many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes where they see and your ears where they hear. May we be with you to hear and to act according to your holy gospels through the prayers of your saints. Pray for the holy gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also our master, those who bidden us to remember them in our supplications and prayers which we offer unto you. O Lord, our God, those who are fallen asleep, repose them. Those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection of us all. If 
Blessings be with us all, Amen. From the Psalms of David, the prophet and the king, may his blessings be with us all, Amen. Do not remember our old transgressions. Let your tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are greatly impoverished. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the glory of your holy name. Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom glory is forever. And ever. Amen. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possession with prodigal living. But when he had spent all there, arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the paws of that swine and ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer to be worthy called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sent he against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here, and I will kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this is my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and let it bleed it with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never give me a young goat that I make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive, and was lost and is found. Glory be to God forever.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. As we enter into the middle of Lent, our gospel readings will start becoming more content heavy and more heavy in regards to wisdom being taught to us, but also about repentance, about preaching, about living correctly. And so today you see, and we have heard it many times, and we have read it many times, and everyone, everyone has their own opinions, who's right more, the older son, the younger son, what should have done, and we relate to certain characters in the story. Today I'm gonna try to take in a different route, to meditate on it, for the sake of our understanding what this actually means, because sometimes we read and we get stuck in the same rapid cycle, and, it, and we're taught by the fathers that every time you read scripture, you should get something new out of it. You should not read the same story more than once and don't gain anything. You should, should be meditating and getting something out of it. And this is why with the blessings of the Holy Spirit, we have the commentary. So for us all, let us kind of look a little bit behind before the Barco Son, what Christ was talking about in the chapter uh, Luke 15. He was talking to the Pharisees and he was trying to tell the Pharisees there's a lot of lost people out there. And he was giving them the lost sheep, which they should understand because of their great fathers, Abraham and David, that they were shepherds. And they understood that the tribes made sure that everyone was saved and all the people in the tribe understood and lived according to the law. So he's trying to tell them, as you have lived, I'm here to collect my sons and daughters. And then he gives them another parable, which I want to emphasize a little bit more on, the 10 silver coins. He says, who has 10 silver coins or loses one? Many people without, again, without the interpretation of the fathers, we don't understand what it means to just say 10 silver coins. A 10 silver coin was a symbol of a, a, symbol of a necklace a bride wore before her wedding day or on her wedding day, which is for us is the image of the church and God. The lost coin would be, for the Jews to understand, that last coin, the specific one that she looked for in a necklace, was the last coin that would be on the necklace that has an image of a man, right? An image of a man because she's a bride entering into her wedding with a man. And so he's saying if a bride loses that, then her wedding cannot be complete. And so he's saying, I lost that coin, which is us, which is humanity. Christ is saying, I lost that coin, which is shows that Christ is coming because sometimes when we say this, we tend as women, and sometimes men, we tend to see women as less. But here he's symbolizing himself with women. He's saying, I am the bride, he is the bridegroom, but I'm coming, seeking you, chasing you. Because back then, it was the woman that would seek the man, because the man had the authority, had the tribe, had the wealth. A woman was considered property. So Christ, in this humility, saying, I am the pro I'll be the property, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for that coin. Because if I don't have that coin, I cannot be married to you. We could easily said, let me destroy this human humanity and create new humanity. He said, no, I love them and I want them and I'll chase them. So he's trying to tell them that in this tradition that you have, I am the bride coming seeking you. And he's saying, which bride will not look for that coin earnestly before she gets married, otherwise she will not be able to get married. So that coin is a representation of the image of God. We lost that image of God. When we sinned with Adam and Eve, we lost that image. And God not anymore because of baptism. We'll talk about it in, in, a, in a little bit. But we lost the image. And he's saying, I'm coming to find the image for you so I can give it back to you so we can have a wedding together and a feast together. And so let's jump then to the third story that Christ mentions where we read today, the prodigal son. And many people, when they read it, they miss out on certain important aspects of it. It says, this man has two sons. And the two sons here, the meditation, one of the fathers says, Adam and Eve. And the younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me, which is symbolism of, of Eve. And saying, so he created humanity, and, and humanity says, well, what, what is my purpose? And so Adam and Eve got what? The image and likeness of God, logic, intelligence, and free will. This is our good of the portions. This is what God has to offer to us that's greater than money or greater than status. The greatest thing that God can give us is what? His image and His likeness. Something that no one else can grasp, something no one else can have or buy. 
So this is why how he divided his livelihood. He looked at the Trinity and said, let us give them our image and likeness. This is Christ, or this is the Trinity giving us their wealth, their greatest wealth, their image and likeness. We tend to talk about it as something easy. Yeah, yeah, God breathed in my face, but He's given you something of importance that only He had it. Only He can get it. Only the Trinity can get it, which is our image and likeness, intelligence, to be able to think, to be able to rationalize, to be able to create, to be able to manage creation. Right? That's what it means to have image and likeness. And so then we know the fall of Adam and Eve. And so this is what the son, younger son did. He said, you know what, now I have this power, right? I have this free will, I have this intelligence, I'll make decisions for myself. And this is what you see Adam and Eve, what they did. They made decisions for themselves. They said, oh, I have this power now. I don't need this father to tell me what to do. And this is what you see the younger son doing. He's saying, I have this wealth now. I can go live in such a way that I have many, many servants right, because his father was very rich, that I can live and be happy and be joyous in the world. He said, I don't want to be in this house anymore. And then he left the house. For us, what does that mean? Say, many of us are respectful individuals. We don't ask our parents for the inheritance. We don't do the such things. But we are in the church. We're in the house. Unfortunately, a lot of us are the older son. Right, a lot of us are the older sons. When we get annoyed that someone living outside the world living in sin, and prayers are being answered. Or when they come, Abuna's so nice to them, and Abuna's top topping on them, and Abuna's hugging them, and Abuna's hanging out with them, and everyone's was like, but I've been here all the time, like how come Abuna's not that nice to me? Abuna's always yelling at me and telling me to do this and do this, but this person comes in, it's like, like it's like Jesus came. And so this is what the older son did, right? He was saying, wait, I was here the whole time, I was in the field working, and this son of yours who comes, who made you look bad, because he took your because that's what, how, how does God look bad in, in, in giving us an image and likeness? In front of the demons, in front of the devil. The devil is laughing, he's like, wait, these are the people you give them the power of your image? Look what they're doing. They're killing each other, they're lying to each other, they're manipulating each other. They're doing worse than I'm doing to them. And so this is what the older son is saying. He embarrassed you, he slept with harlots. He gave your money to unrighteous and people. He made us a mockery. And now you're welcoming him. And this is what the older son, us, in the church today, that's what we do today, including myself. That when someone comes, right, and someone who is not living according to the truth that we understand, and God's answering their prayers, and God's blessing them, we start to what? Get annoyed. We and in the church like, wait a minute, so I'm here, and I'm working hard, and this person comes, and all of a sudden, they have this prayer answered, right, and all of a sudden, they have this status, and all of a sudden, everyone's their friend, and they forgot that they embarrassed us, they forgot that they left the church, they forgot this, and they forgot that, and we start to remember their sins. And so the older father was telling him, my son, you're with me always. In the church, you don't need anything, you don't need parties. Like, yeah, you can have a goat, and it's funny, he's asking for a goat, right? He's like, he's asking for something small, like he has the whole richness, and he's asking for something small. And this is us as older sons and daughters. Sometimes God gives us everything, right? Which is the resurrection is the greatest gift, our image and likeness. But yet we're annoyed we didn't get this one acceptance or one relationship or one thing or one job or one. And we're so annoyed at the little goat. I didn't have a goat. God's looking at he's like, is that, is that what I make you have? Like I've given you the resurrection. You are with me in the church. You don't need anything. In this church, in this building, you don't need anything. You're with me and whatever I have is yours. Right? So, for us as older sons and older daughters, in to the Most High, in the church, let us not be like the older son. Let us not murmur in the heart. He said he refused to go in. Well, now what that means? So, he doesn't want to go in the sanctuary. He doesn't want to go in the altar. He's like, I'm not going to heaven. He's like, I'm not going to walk. If, if, if people like this make it to heaven, so what's the point? I'm not going in there. I don't want that. How many of us have said that? In the church. He says, wait, wait, wait. So, I work hard, work hard, work hard and then I go to heaven, and then anyone can just make it too, and then we get really annoyed and really pissed off, like, how's that fair? How many of us said, how's that fair? Or the talents, the first person who works in the first hour gets the same reward or same wage as the person who worked the 11th hour. Many people who are righteous people, who are Christians, including myself, have said, how's that fair? Why? Because we're relying on ourselves. And how do we know that? The son, the older son said what? I was with you for many years, and I have never, I never 
transgress your commandment at any time. He's being, he's being prideful. He's saying, I never did anything wrong. How do you know you never did anything wrong? How do you know that you've been doing a lot of wrong things and your dad just forgiving it? He's saying, I've been with you and I've done anything wrong. And this is what the righteous person in church does. They see that by coming to church and fasting a little bit and, and giving some service and going to Sunday school and being nice, that they are perfect human beings and that they should receive whatever they pray for. And so now they're what? Self-righteous. I have never turned, I never, I never killed, I never murdered, I never slept with harlots, I never done any of these things. Right? And we start to speak in such a self-righteous way that we don't see that we too have been forgiven many things and our dad is not pointing it out. Right? He's not nitpicking, he's just letting it go. And for us, now what does that mean is scary. Because if you're in the church and you're ungrateful and you're full of pride and you think you're righteous, it means you're ungrateful. And you're walking in such a way that's ungrateful and unappreciative that even when you see someone come in, you're happy. Because if you're not happy when someone comes in, it means what? It means that you're looking at their sins. But if you're happy when someone comes in back home, you're happy because like, oh man, this is great. Because I've been forgiven, God's going to forgive them too. So if you're not happy when someone's prayers are answered and yours are not, or someone comes back to church and everyone's happy and no one cares that you walk into church because we always see you, then you know you're walking in an ungrateful manner. And if you are an ungrateful person and there's blessings in your life, you get jobs, you get, you get cars, you should be very scared because these blessings are not from God. They're from your own ego and from the devil himself. So anyone who's ungrateful and you're convicted right now that you're ungrateful and you feel like your life is going well, you should be really scared. Or you find that prayer has been answered and you know that prayer should have been answered because you're ungrateful, you should be very scared that this prayer is not from God. This is given to you by your own ego and the devil himself. And this is why the son refused to come in. He did not understand the type of blessings that he had, and so he did not understand the type of blessings that his father gave to him. So let's look at the blessings that the father gave the son. First of all, he ran, which I'm not going to go into it, many of us already know this, an old Jewish man running is weird, right? If any of because most of our parents know this better in, in Islam, because they copy the Jews, they have very specific rules on how to live. Like in Islam, you see um, the sheikhs and all that, they don't run. They, have to, they can't show their hands. They can't show their arms. Like they have specific rules out of honor and glory. So Christ saying an old man ran to his son already shows you that Christ is thinking in a radical way. Forgive. The next thing is he felt and he was happy. He was watching the whole time for his son. And then he ran and he kissed him on the neck. If anyone ever been to a third world country, I know here we don't have that problem because we have clean air for the most part. Right? So if you go to a third world country, the most two disgusting areas in your body is going to be your neck and your armpit. Because there's a lot of dirt in the air and a lot of sweat. If you ever go to Egypt and you go like this or like this, you find that your hand is black. He's saying Christ kissed him on the most disgusting area of his body. Meaning that Christ loves you in the most way that you come to him. Whatever sin you're coming with, he loves you and he falls on your neck and he kisses you. And then what he do? By kissing your neck, because he is Christ, he purifies you. Christ does not become tainted by your sins. He purifies you. And then what does he do? Bring the rope. What does the rope symbolize? Baptism. Right? Let's, let's put the rope back on him. Let's hide his filth. Because once I put the rope, all the filth, the swine, the pig, the dirt washes away, which is baptism, washed away. Let's put the ring on his finger. What does the ring symbolize? The Mayrun, getting back to image and likeness. This is why it was important for Christ to become incarnate. He brought back the image and likeness to us. Adam and Eve lost it. He brought it back to us. So the ring, in back in the day, if you if your dad was a king or your mom was a queen, whatever it is, you had a, an emblem or you had a family crest that you had the ring. So everyone knew when you had this ring that you belonged to royalty. And so he's saying, put the ring back on him, right? Which is a symbolism of the image and likeness of God. And then what? Give him sandals. What does the sandals represent? The scripture. He will walk in the truth again. He will walk according to the scripture again. This is why you see Abuna offering praises to the to incense to the gospel and holding the gospel when he's reading, because it's not about Abuna reading, it's about the scripture speaking to us. So the sandals are a symbolism. He's gonna live according to the gospel again. He's going to walk in truth again. And then the fatted calf. What is the fatted calf symbolizes? A fatted calf is a calf or cow. 
that has been fed only whole wheat. Sometimes if you go in Egypt, you see they stuff the duck and they stuff chicken. I've seen it. It was very interesting. So they stuff them to make it very fat so that when they cook it, it's what? It's more meat. And so the fatted calf in the Jewish tradition is a cow or a calf that has been only fed whole wheat. So it can become very fatted. What does whole wheat represent? The body, right? This is why orban is made a specific way, right? No sugar, none of that stuff. It's only wheat. Flour, water, which is, that's what Christ is. Christ was flesh and water, right? And the blood is the wine. And so for us, the fatted calf, he said, let's go to communion now. I've given you baptism. I've given you identity back. You're walking truth again. Now let's go to the final thing, which is communion, which is the highest form of honor in any Christian life. Communion. And that's why the son is like, I'm not going in. I'm not going to this communion. And so how many of us have done that? Yeah, so what is this God? I prayed and I came and I came and I came and this person, whatever it is, where is this God? I, suck, I, I struggle, I struggle, I struggle, I struggle. I suffer aimlessly. I'm not coming to church anymore. I'm not coming into the communion. It's scary. And the reason why the dad did all this, if you remember the son, when he was with the swine, what did he, what did he say? He wished to have had bread and no one, he, did, he was hungry for bread. Meaning for what? Bread is the, the, the communion, the word of life. He was hungry for his dad. He came to himself. What the fathers teach us, coming to yourself means that when you live outside of the church, that's not yourself. That's your alter ego that's manipulated by the demons. Your true self is in the image and likeness of God. So that's why when you have your true self, you don't care what money you don't have. You don't care what status you don't have. You don't care about the jobs you don't have. You don't care about the friends you don't have. You care about one thing, that I keep my image and likeness renewed daily. And so for us today, the hope to learn from the son, the younger son, in recognizing that I need to come to myself quickly so I don't become like the older son. If the older son did what the younger son did and came to himself and said, after he's talking to the servant, he's like, what am I doing? That's my brother and that's my dad. Obviously, I trust my dad because I work for him and I love my dad. Obviously, my dad knows what he's doing. Let me go and see what's going on. Let me, let me, let me have a conversation with my dad. And he refused to come in. To the point that dad came out to him, which is Christ telling you what? I'll chase you. But if you're refusing to have a part of me in the communion, then you'll be lost. And then you'll not be with me. Because communion for me is me joining with everyone in the body, in the flesh. So if you don't want to come have a, a feast with us because your prayers were answered too slow or not answered at all, or you're too tall, you're too short, whatever it is, then you have lost the point. You have missed the point. You have followed your own righteousness and your own ego. So for us, let us be like the younger son in quickly repenting, quickly coming to ourselves, recognizing that dad is dad. He is all-knowing. He cares for us. And then for us to serve inside the church, that we serve his holy name, not our ego, not to serve to get our prayers answered, not to serve because we can judge others, none of that. We serve because it keeps us close to God. We are in the church because it keeps us close to God. Not because I can say, yeah, I'm righteous, I go to church. And then you walk out that church and judging others. Because this is what Christ said, if I have forgiven you, and have I allowed you to be in my house, who are you to go tell your brother or sister you have sinned? And woe to you, because then I will not accept you, and I will accept your brother and sister. And so for us today, Christ was talking to the Pharisees. But I'll be honest with you, my brothers and my sisters, if Christ was here today, he would give us Christians, Orthodox Christians, the same message. Why? Because Orthodoxy is a way of truth, and it's a beautiful faith. But sometimes we become like the Pharisees. Sometimes we want honor. We want glory. We want respect, right? I was talking to a family the other day over the phone, and they're happy to be Orthodox, but yet they want their son or daughter to live in such a prideful way. I'm like, so how are you living according to the image and likeness of God? He's like, la, 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 buna, this, is, this is something else. Like, this is life. And they're separating. Christ is like, no, there's no separation. Your life is my life in you. And your honor and glory is always. And so don't go in there and start fabricating your own prayers. Don't say, oh, I prayed for this for such a long time. It didn't happen. I think this may be it. You know what? This is it. And you go for it. Because then you're ungrateful for waiting. And then you create your own things. And then you'll be lost. 
and then this thing will blow up, and then you'll come blame God. He's like, I've spoken to you, and I told you to wait. You don't want to wait. Because the older son, eventually what would happen to him, he would come back complaining. He would say, I told you to come in. You're the one that didn't want to accept your brother. So what am I supposed to do? Like St. Anthony taught us. You know, this one monk came to him because this one monk fell in great sin. When they say great sin, it's usually a sexual sin. So in the monastery, that's scandalous. So his brothers kicked him out. So he walked to St. Anthony the Great, and he went to his, and he was like, Abba, I have done this sin. I'm sorry, forgive me. My brothers kicked me out. What do I do? He said, you are forgiven. Go back to your brothers and tell them it's okay for you to come back in. He's like, okay, he was happy. He went back. He knocked on the door, the monastery. His brother's like, what are you doing here? He's like, the great Abba Anthony. Abba Anthony, the father, he's like, I can come back. He said, you're a liar. He didn't say that. And if he told you that, because you didn't tell him the truth. And they said, get out of here. You're not going to come. You're a sinner. And then he went back to Abba Anthony. He's like, so they didn't accept the message. What do I do? So what happened? The Abba, the great Abba, walked back with him. He took him by the hand and walked back to the monastery. And there's two types of translations. It says he took him in. And one translation, he stood at the door and he knocked. And obviously they saw St. Anthony the Great, so they opened the door. Keep in mind, Anthony the Great in his late life, he was, he was a hermit, so no one really rarely saw him. And so they were opening the door with great honor and joy. And he's like, my brothers, I have a story to tell you. He was at the door. I have a story to tell you. There was a boat and there was a harsh storm, a great storm. And one of our brothers fell over. And by great effort, by great effort, somehow we pulled him back in the moat. You're going to take him and throw him back? He's saying, that's what you're doing. Yes, your brother fell over from the truth. But by great effort and repentance, and thank God he wasn't lost, he came back. And you're throwing him back into the sea? He's saying, let him in and live in. And so this is the idea for us. When you come into church, don't be like those righteous monks standing at the doors like, get out of here. You don't belong with us. This is what happens when others' prayers are answered and not your prayers. Because I know many of us don't do that, right? We don't sit at the door kicking people out. But you do it in your heart. When someone else has more blessings than you, when someone else's prayers are answered quickly, when you want something so bad and someone else gets it, like, really? They got it first? And that type of language, that type of groaning in your heart is what you're doing that's wrong, is the older son. And then the, the Christ is in front of you saying, repent, this is not right thinking. And then you're more hard-headed. If you are such in your heart, including all of us and myself, that it's repent quickly before we take communion, because if you don't repent in that and say, Father, I have sinned. I'm sorry for being groaning in my heart incorrectly. Allow me to partake. This communion will be a condemnation for you. And if you have blessings, knowing you're ungrateful, run away from those blessings. Leave them. Because those blessings of your ego and from the demon and not from God. So let us keep this story in mind. Let us live according to young son's heart of repentance, not actions of repentance. Actions, yes, returning. But let us also live according to the older son, struggling in the Lord's house without pride, without ego, without selfishness. And glory be God forever. Amen.
of faith, there are books of men, Kira Laison, Kira Laison, and Ometh Mead. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men of our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, of the Virgin Mary, and became man, and he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead. He sits to the right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess some baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Ah, ah, ah. My brothers, I have sinned. Forgive me, my brothers and my sisters. I have sinned. Forgive me. Pray on my behalf. Shli. Ebe broshev se stazite Ereni pasi Et omnev mati So O God, the great, the eternal Who formed man in incorruption And death which entered into the world Through the envy of the devil you have destroyed by the life giving manifestation of your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. You have filled the earth with a heavenly peace by which the host of angels glorify you, saying, Glory to God in the highest peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Pray for perfect peace, love, and the holy apostolic. Lord, have mercy. Goodwill, O God, fill our hearts with your peace, cleanse us from all blemish, all guile, all hypocrisy, all craftiness, and the remembrance of vice bearing death, and make us all worthy, our Master, to greet one another with a holy kiss that without casting us into condemnation we may partake of your immortal and heavenly gifts in Christ Jesus our Lord. Meet one another with the holy kiss. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Yes, Lord, who are Jesus Christ, the Son of God, hear us and have mercy upon us. Offer, offer, offer in order. And with trembling, look towards the east, let us attend. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Mary, O Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. We worship you, O Christ, with your good Father and the whole Holy Spirit, for you have come and saved us. A mercy of peace, a sacrifice of praise. The Lord be with you. Your heart. We have.
and reigning forever who dwells in the highest and looks upon the lowly who has created the heaven the earth the sea and all that therein the father of our lord god and savior jesus christ by whom you have created all things visible and invisible who is seated upon the throne of his glory and is worshipped by all the holy powers. You who are seated stand, before whom stand the angels, the archangels, the principalities, the authorities, the thrones, the dominions, and the powers. Look towards the east. You are he around whom stand the cherubim full of eyes and the seraphim with six wings, praising you continuously without ceasing, saying, Let us the cherubim worship you and the seraphim Glorify you, proclaiming and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord of, of hosts, heaven placed us in the paradise of joy when we disobeyed your commandments by the deceit of the serpent we fell from eternal life and were exiled from the paradise of joy you have not abandoned us to the end but have always visited us through your holy prophets and in the last days you manifested yourself to us who were sitting in darkness and the shadow of death through your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, whom of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Virgin Mary. the ways of salvation he granted us the birth when high through water and spirit he made 
made us unto himself an assembled people and sanctified us by your Holy Spirit. He loved his own who were in the world and as a ransom on our behalf gave himself upon to death which reigned over us whereby we were bound and sold on the account of our sins. He descended into Hades through the cross. Amen. I dead on the third day he ascended into the heavens and saw your right hands O father he has appointed a day for recompense on which he will appear to judge the world in righteousness and give each one according to their deeds. According to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. He instituted for us this great mystery of godliness for being determined to give himself upon to death for the life of the world. We believe. He took bread into his holy hands, which are without spot or blemish, blessed and life gave it. We believe that this is true. Amen. He looked up toward heaven to you God, who is Father and the Master of every one, and we had given thanks. Amen. He blessed it. Amen. He sanctified. to his saintly disciples and holy apostles saying take eat of it all of you for this is my body which is broken for you and for many to be given for the remission of sins this do in remembrance of me yes it's true amen Likewise, also the cup after supper, he mixed it with wine and water, and when he had given thanks, Amen. he blessed it. Amen. He sanctified it. And we glorify. He 
tasted. And gave it also to his saintly disciples and holy apostles, saying, Take, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many to be given for the remission of sins. This do in remembrance of me. This is also true. Amen. Oh, every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim my death, confess my resurrection, and remember me. Till I come. Amen, 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 your best, O Lord, we proclaim your holy resurrection and ascension. Resurrection from the dead, his ascension into the heavens, his sitting at your right hand, O Father, and his second coming from the heavens. Awesome and full of glory, we offer unto you your gifts and what is yours for everything concerning everything and in everything. Worship God in fear and trembling. We bless you, we bless you, we serve you, we worship you. Let us attend our mean. This bread, he makes it into his holy body. I believe, amen. And this cup, also the precious blood of the new covenant. Again, I believe, amen. Savior Jesus Christ, given for the remission of sins and eternal life to those who partake of Him. Ye Lord, the mercy, Lord, the mercy, Lord, mercy. Make us so worthy, our Master, to partake of your holies unto the purification of souls, bodies, and spirit. And we come one body and one spirit, and may have a share in her and for all the saints who will please us the beginning. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Lord, have mercy. This which you have acquired to yourself with the precious blood of your Christ, keep her in peace with all the Orthodox bishops who are in her. For most remember, O Lord, our great patriarch, Pope Abadudros II, and his partner, Apostolic Lydia, Father Metropolitan 
Church to shepherd your flock in peace. Remember, O Lord, the Orthodox Hegemon's priest and deacon. Lord, have mercy. And all the servants, anoint virginity and the purity of all your faithful people. Remember, O Lord, to have mercy upon us all. Have mercy upon us, O God, the Father, the Pan, Remember, O Lord, the salvation of this your holy place and every place and every monastery of our Lord's fathers. Lord, have mercy. And those who dwell in God's faith, graciously accord, O Lord, to bless the air, the heaven, the fruits of the earth, the waters, the rivers, the seas, the herbs, the plants, the field this year. Lord, have mercy, Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Raise them to their measure according to your grace. Give joy to the face of the earth. May its furrows be abundant, water and its fruits be plentiful. Preparing for sowing and harvesting. Manage our lives as deem fit. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness for the sake of the poor of your people, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of all of us, we entreat you and seek your holy name for the eyes of everyone wait upon you. For you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness, O you who give food to all flesh. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness that we too having sufficiency in everything always may abound in every good deed. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have brought you these gifts, those on whose behalf they have been brought, and by those whom they have been brought, give them all the heavenly reward. Pray for these holy and precious gifts, our sacrifices, and those who bring them. Lord, have O Lord, it is the command of your only begotten Son that we share in the commemoration of your saints. Graciously accord, O Lord, to remember all the saints who have pleased you since the beginning. Our holy fathers, the patriarchs, the prophets, the apostles, the preachers, the evangelists, the martyrs, the confessors, and all the spirit of the righteous perfected in the faith. Most of all, the pure, full of glory, Ever virgin, holy Theotokos, set Mary, who truly give birth to God the Logos. And Saint John the Foreman Baptist of Martyr, Saint Stephen the Archdeacon and Paul the Beholder of God, the Evangelist. The holy apostle and martyr, the patient St. Peter, our teacher, the scholar, St. Narcissus the Apostolic, St. Peter the Holy Martyr, High Priest, St. John Chrysostom, St. Josius, St. Theophilus, St. Demetrius, St. Cyril, St. Basil, St. Gregory the Theologian, St. Gregory the Wonder Worker, St. Gregory the Armenian, the 318 assembled in Nicaea, the 150 Constantinople, the 200 Ephesus, our righteous Father, the great Abba Antony, the righteous above Paul, 
the three seven may carry and all their children the cross bears our father by John the human our righteous father peace joy the perfect man the beloved of our good Savior and all the choir of your saints to whose prayers and supplications have mercy on us all and save us for the sake of your holy name which is called upon us that those who read beside the name of our father of our holy father the patriarch who have fallen asleep O lord before their soul then forgive us our sins may their holy blessing be Amen. Glory to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, bless Amen. Those, O oh Lord, and everyone whose name we have mentioned, those we have not mentioned, those whom each one of us has in mind, and those who are not in mind, who have fallen asleep and reposed in the faith of Christ, graciously, O oh Lord, repose your servants, Samia, Shaka, Naim, Yusuf, Helena, Mikhail, in the bosom of our holy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sustain them in green pasture, besides still waters in the paradise of joy, the place out of which grief, sorrow, and groaning have fled away in the light of your sake. Lord, have mercy. souls you have taken repose them in the paradise of joy in the region of the living forever in the heavenly jerusalem in that place and we too who are sojourners in this place keep us in your faith and grant us your peace unto the end as it was and shall be from generation to generation and unto the ages of all ages. to your kingdom that as in this so also in all things your great and holy name may be glorified blessed and exalted and everything honored and blessed with jesus christ your beloved son and the holy spirit peace be with you all and with your spirit Give thanks to God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for he has made us worthy now to stand in this holy place, to lift up our hands and to serve his holy name. Let us also ask him to make us worthy of the communion and partaking of his divine an immortal mystery. Amen. Uh, holy body, we were 
worship your holy body. Precious blood. His Christ, the Pantocrator, the Lord, our God. Lord, have mercy. who sent his only begotten son into the world he taught us the law and the commandments written in the holy gospel he taught us that that fasting and prayer cast out demons when he said this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer and fasting Son, Lord, have mercy. Fasting and prayer are those which raise Elijah to heaven and save Daniel from the lion's den. Fasting and prayer are those which Moses pursued until he received the law and the commandments written with the finger of God. Fasting and prayer are those which the Ninevites pursued, so God had mercy on them and forgave them their sins and lifted his wrath away from them. Fasting and prayer are those which the prophets pursued. They prophesied concerning the advent of Christ many generations before his coming. Fasting and prayer are those which the apostles pursued, they preached to all nations and made them Christians, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <speaking in Hebrew> Have mercy. Fasting and prayer are those which the martyrs pursued. They shed their blood for the name of Christ, who confessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate. Fasting and prayer are those which the righteous and the just and the cross bearers pursued. They dwelt in the mountains, deserts, and holes of the earth because of their great love for Christ the King. And we too, let us fast from all evil in purity and righteousness, and let us proceed forth to this holy sacrifice and partake of it with thanksgiving, so that with a pure heart and enlightened soul, an unashamed face, a faith unfeigned, a perfect love, and a firm hope, we may dare with boldness, without fear, to pray to you, O God, who is in the heavens, and say, Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us on temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, for thy is the kingdom. In Christ Jesus. 
Remember, O Lord, our assemblies. Bless them. Save dominion with your spirit in the fear of God. Amen, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. The holy is for the holy. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The sanctification is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. One is the Holy Father, one is the Holy Son, one is the Holy Spirit. Ah, ah, amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The holy body and the precious true blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of our God. Amen. Amen. The holy precious body and the true blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of our God. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of Emmanuel, our God. This is true. Amen. Amen. I believe. Amen. Amen. I believe. I believe. I believe and confess to the last breath that this is the life giving flesh that your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, took from our Lady the Lady of us all, the Holy Theotokos, St. Mary. He made it one with his divinity, without mingling, without confusion, and without alteration. He confessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate. He gave it up for us upon the holy word of the cross of his own will. For us all, truly I believe that his divinity parted not from his humanity for a single moment, nor a twinkling of an eye given for us for a salvation, remission of sins and eternal life to those who partake of him. I believe, I believe, I believe that this is true. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I believe, I believe, I believe. This is true. Amen. Pray for us and for all Christians who said to us concerning them, Remember us in the house of the Lord. The peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you. Let us sing Alleluia. Pray for the worthy part.
partaking of their makin, heavenly holy mysteries, Lord have mercy. Oh, eh. 
Bless him with pleasant sounding symbols. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ fasted for us forty days and forty nights. Praise him upon the symbols of joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ fasted for Full pass, 
listen with understanding against the judge do not sin if the devil causes you to transgress resist sin with tears and regret begin your repentance today be fearful of the judge day friend and keen will desert you no one can help you on that day blessed are those who have mercy who get to the poor and fast and pray the Holy Spirit will fill their hearts. The Son will show them mercy on judgment day. Our Lord spoke a parable about the clamor son. It was written in the scriptures for the benefit of everyone. In the gospel it is written, there was a man who had two sons. The younger son sent to his father, Give me my share of the fortune. He divided all he had to his two sons. His fortune was given. The youngest son went far away and spent his money in prodigal living. Blessed are those who have mercy, who give to the poor and fast and pray. The Holy Spirit will fill their hearts, the sun will show them mercy on judge. He became poor and lost all he had. Of goodness he became naked. A famine struck throughout the land. It was void of anything blessed. He looked for work in that place. He joined a man who is the devil. That place is this evil world. The swine are the sins and evils. He humiliated him to care for swine. He wished to eat the pods of sins. He became poor in his faith. He became a slave to his
Let us praise the angels, saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Amen. 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 Veta verneste vinere ego, ene men ho ne me men ego, sha ente soten gen ne no vi sotie mono, wo nai nan kirie lei son, kirie lei son, kirie flogi son amine smo ero, smo ero estime tania coni. Christos Benoti, O King of Peace, bestow your peace, surrender for us your peace, and forgive us our sins. Fear is the power, the glory, the dominion forever, and make us worthy. Pray, thank you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we free those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the gift and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. All those wish to go, go in peace, and the peace of the Lord be with you. <laughs> for the schools, uh, for not to teach our kids about the transgender and uh, homosexuals and things like this. It's with Martina out in the door. You have to be registered voter. citizen. You have to be registered. You vote with the Riverside community of San Bernardino. احنا هنا Riverside Community I mean Riverside County فأرجوكم اللي يسجل عشان لو واحد من الخمسة في الفورم طلع مش مش فوتر الأربعة التانيين هيتلغوا طيب شكرا لو في أي سؤال لو تسمحوا تقولنا أو تيجوا لقسطنطين نعم بالعربي لو تسمحوا في ورا تسجيل ال لل عشان التعليم اللي في المدارس بخصوص ال ال الجنس في المدارس هم دلوقتي بيجمعوا امضاءات ولازم تبقى انت مسجل ان انت تقدر ان انت تسجل تدي صوتك يعني مش بس سيتيزن ولا 18 سنة لازم تكون مسجل في الكاونتي ان انت Riverside County or San Bernardino. لو عندك أي سؤال تعالوا اسألوا لنا وإحنا نقول لك بالضبط. شكرا. النهاردة بالليل نهضة الكنيسة المعاشة وهيكون معنا قدس أبونا إبرام أيوب وهيكلمنا عن الكنيسة والمجتمع. يا ريت تيجم ويوم السبت في الألحان من خمسة ونص و وفي بننزل الجدول دايما تبعونا يعني معلش بنضايقكم